Welcome to the Green Building Show, where we investigate green design and building trends throughout Australia. This week, we kick off a brand new series on how to future-proof your home. This means, how can you make your home more sustainable, comfortable and cost-effective in the years to come? To get us started, I'll be speaking with Dick Clark. He's an environmental consultant who's going to explain the benefits of renovating with reverse brick veneer. In Australian style, we profile an award-winning lightweight home by LSA Architects, and Mark Jones will bring us number nine of the 10 light home hot design blogs. So basically we're talking about future-proofing your houses and in this instance we're talking about reverse brick veneer and how it really works as a renovation option rather than just a knockdown rebuild. So tell us how, why is this not, not very popular in Australia uh, as, a, as a renovation option and what do you think it, its potential is? Mm. That's a really good question. I think um, you, you've you used an interesting term there when you said popular uh, because to say something isn't very popular means that people have considered it and rejected it. But in fact, I think probably a better way of thinking about reverse brick veneer would be to say it's not very common because people that have considered it will usually embrace it, um, but most people just don't consider it. In fact, it's amazing how many people still say reverse what? <laughs> uh, and, and, and you can see the wheels turning and they kind of work it out within three or four seconds of them asking their own question. But uh, getting people to consider it and, and getting it uh, onto the table, I guess, you know, when, when builders and architects are talking to their clients, that's the hard part. And there are a number of reasons for it being uncommon. Um, and I think one of them is the, um, the tendency for builders to be risk averse. And that's fair enough. I mean, builders like to know that what they're going to build is, is going to stay up and work properly and, and certainly not cause them pain in terms of callbacks. Uh, and, and brick veneer, from that point of view, is very low risk. You know, it's not like a you know a wonderful new roofing system that might break down in five years and then everybody's left uncovered. Uh, and it also has a very long history. But I think one of the other problems is that we have this kind of catch twenty two, where people will only consider something seriously if they already know about it or if somebody can give them really good solid information about it. And so if the architects and building designers and builders aren't putting it in front of the clients, then the clients don't know about it. And if the clients don't know about it, then they don't ask for it. And because they don't ask for it, the building industry tends not to then bring it forward. So it's a self-perpetuating thing. And we need a circuit breaker. And that hopefully is the sort of thing that we can do is, is to you know drop these great ideas into that vicious cycle and break it. Okay, and how do you think um, reverse brick veneer works as a, as a renovation option or a retrofit option rather than just building from scratch? Mm. Well, the, the great benefits of reverse brick veneer are obviously there whether you renovate or build from scratch and that is that the thermal mass is on the inside where it can really work to regulate temperature yeah, because as you know, most people who are aware of this know traditional brick veneer is, is completely back to front in that the thermal mass is on the outside subject to the changing weather on the day and seasons and provides no real benefit to the internal spaces. So if we're going to uh, do a renovation with reverse brick veneer, then we need to find those buildings and building types that can most easily use it. And that means that there are some buildings that just, it, it won't be appropriate and, and shouldn't be considered. But there are many others where it can be used to great advantage and by finding ways of work, making the, the layout work better, and, and that often involves you know, other changes to the buildings as well, but when we identify where it can be used best in a particular layout, uh, then it doesn't need to be the complete house. You, know, you don't have to do a complete internal retrofit of reverse brick veneer. You can just uh, do targeted areas so you, you very strategically identify which parts will benefit from the thermal mass and you okay. just do it there. Oh, fantastic. See, so you don't have to wrap a whole house. No. Such, but you can do just a, one particular part of the house and that will improve the thermal comfort 
on mm. their own. Yeah, typically living areas, but also some people find great benefit in bedroom areas, especially walls behind bed heads, where the thermal mass then does, um, especially in, in, in summer. I mean, th this is the typical scenario. The house is hot, everyone wants to go to bed, and, and it's just still really hot inside. And mm -hmm. So we, there are things that need to be done um, beyond the reverse brick veneer section, like getting control of the insulation and the shading and the glazing. But having done all of those things, then having a big lump of thermal mass behind the bed is a great way of regulating the temperature, f especially for the upper part of the body that is nearest to that thermal mass. But, okay. you know, really it's, it's about living areas. That's the, the number one area that you would place it. Well, the home we're sitting in right now is, is your home, Dick. And this was included in the, as a case study in the government's Your Home Technical Manual. And you've, so which part of the, this home did you um, wrap in reverse brick veneer and why did you choose that part, part of the house? Yeah, well, we did it as, as the lounge room. Um, the house was built in 1962. It's an old weatherboard, uh, hardwood frame, cypress pine, weatherboards, concrete tile roof. Very, very typical house for various parts of New South Wales, especially. And um, it, it had been extended over the years before we bought it. And... Uh, this particular the wing that we're sitting sitting in used to be two bedrooms but it's right on the north side of the house so it's the ideal location for a living area so we basically flipped the layout without adding a single square meter so what used to be the lounge room on the south we've been made into a bedroom and then this became the lounge room and uh, obviously we changed the glazing to get north winter light in and we took control of the shading to keep the summer sun out and so on but having done all that, we then said, OK, let's put in a, a concrete slab floor so there's a high mass floor and then let's put reverse brick veneer inside the walls on three sides, not the northern side because that's mostly glass. Um, so it's the east, south and west, this wall behind me being the western side. And, uh, and so it gives it a really good wrap up in thermal mass. All right. And, but how difficult is it to... Or what, I guess what materials are ideal for, for doing a reverse brick veneer renovation? Is it the, the wooden cladding or is it a oh, well, more traditional brick veneer? Yeah, uh, well, look, you can, you can do brick veneer. Um, you, you end up with a, the kind of slightly humorous situation where you have a, um, a reverse brick veneer, brick veneer. <laughs> Uh, but there's no point taking down the brick veneer unless you have other reasons for doing so. So is it? I thought I thought it was just simply a, as wrapping the already existing brick veneer in a lightweight product. Yeah. So well, works. wrapping maybe we should change that to lining. So because uh, wrapping we probably normally think about putting something around the outside. What mm. we're talking about is putting something around the the inside. Yeah. Um, so uh, what the external cladding is, it actually becomes irrelevant provided it is well insulated. Mm -hmm. And obviously lightweight claddings lend themselves beautifully to high insulation values. And, and so a lightweight structure, uh, you know, typical timber frame house with uh, whatever product on the outside, FC sheet, weatherboards, whatever it might be, mm -hmm. as long as that wall framing and cladding system is well insulated, then if the structure can support some internal thermal mass as a reverse brick veneer, then it will work. Dick Clark, thank you for your time. Thanks, Carlos. This week we've got the Vogue Living blog, which is the official blog of Vogue Living magazine. Um, as you would expect, it covers everything from the best in interior design um, as well as architecture and it's absolutely simply amazing. Well, this blog is a little bit uh, difficult to navigate, um, but it's well worth the search through. When you do get there, you actually find some really powerful images backed up by some really, really fantastic articles. One of the things that we noticed about this blog was there was a guest blog from uh, Sabella Court, who we have uh, recently interviewed on our very own Green Building Show. She's uploaded uh, quite a montage of uh, fantastic photos from her travels through India. Uh, it's quite well worth the search to have a look at her photos and all the colours and amazing um, different views that she has throughout India. You can follow this entire blog on Twitter at Vogue Living. Well, I'm here today with Justin Holman. He's an associate architect at LSA Architects down in Melbourne. Thank you for being with us, Justin. That's my pleasure. Great. 
So we're talking today about the South Yarra House and looking at the photos here, it's an absolutely spectacular looking lightweight home, also in Melbourne. Can you tell us what was the brief from the client, Justin? Uh, the brief from the client really was uh, very straightforward. We were lucky enough to have some clients that uh, were um, pretty much had a palette um, of, of design ideas ready for us, but the main ones really were they wanted to use as much uh, natural light as possible, um, a connection with the outside um, through courtyard spaces and, and the rear garden. Um, also, they had some very specific room requirements, uh, especially when the type was very, uh, the site was very tight as well. So yep. the, the tight site was a, a very hard one that we had to deal with. Um, contemporary in design. So they were pretty easy, and then they let us um, um, have free range, which was very nice. Fantastic. And so why did you go with, how did you come up with that design? I mean, the, the, the upper side of the house is lightweight and a really um, vivid colour. I guess, how did you um, come up with that design, and, and what's the what's the benefit for, for the occupant? Um, well, the, the client had um, a number of Aboriginal artworks, so and they were very fond of those. So we actually had some, uh, used three um, of what I would call sort of burnt oranges that formed the... Um, facade there of the first floor so we we used those oranges and put them on the building and then that flowed into the inside um, and became a feature of the dining room ceiling uh, that allowed for um, this connection with outside and natural light uh, a lot more as well right great and you obviously used the lightweight um, cladding material for the we did for the upper upper story, I guess. Why did you decide to go with lightweight materials, and and what and what what lightweight materials did you actually use, and what were the benefits? Um, first of all, yes, we did use lightweight materials. Um, the main benefit uh, was a the structure. Uh, the second one was the tight site, and that it only had one axis from the front road. Um, we had to use um, the, the matrix panel the sound matrix panel um, for the ease of use in terms of movability around the site but also um, access to the site as well. All the materials had to be delivered at once so, and getting everything up to the first floor had to be easy for, for the chaps on site. So that was one of the, the main reasons why we used light materials on the matrix panel. All right, fantastic. Well, congratulations on a fantastic house and um, thank, thank you very much for your time, Justin. No, thank you.